Good day, humans. Wetek has been here in the arena for uh, another uh, deck. This time, we're featuring Orzov Cleric deck. I've been trying to concoct this uh, potion of a deck. It's been actually also proliferating the um, standard right now. But I want to make my own version of this. And of course, everybody knows it, it runs on Cleric of Life's Bond that it adds plus one plus one and attacks, it gets bigger and all. And we also have Luminarx Aspirant here that adds plus one plus one target on creature. Okay, so let's see. Let's dive in to the deck itself. We're gonna make this quick. This is an aggro deck. Get plus one plus one, you attack and finish up the game. Okay, so we have for one drop, we have three Alcid of Life's Bounty. It's a lifelink creature that when you sacrifice it, a uh, target creature enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice. So it protects your creature. You want to protect your Luminarch Aspirant or Cleric of Life's Bond. You know, and we have three Speaker of the Heavens. Now, this one's a cool card, actually. It's a 1 1 1 to cast Vigilance Life Link. That alone is cool, right? But we have something else its ability to create 4 4 white angel creature token with flying. And you can activate this when you have at least uh, a life of 27 and only can be activated during your turn like a sorcery okay and we have two only two of course archfiend's vessel because they get killed really easily you can just kill it eliminate it you know like you heartless it you know something like that right and we have hallowed priest you cannot imagine how big this guy can get right it's like um, it's a plus one plus one creature. Whenever you gain life, you put a plus one plus one counter on Hallowed Priest. That's it. And how do you gain life? Oh, of course, with an impassioned orator. Whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Cool, huh? And you have, of course, my one of the most important, a more important card in this deck is the Luminar Expirant, where at the beginning of the com of combat, on your turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So just add, make it bigger, right? And we have the dual uh, dual face lands, um, not a two face land, I don't know how they call it, right? Uh, Skyclave Basilica enters the battlefield tap and you produce one white mana. As a creature, it's a uh, two to cast one tree that when Skyclave Cleric enters a battlefield, you gain two life. Gain two life with Hallowed Priest gets bigger, right? <coughs> and of course, you have the most important key card here is the Cleric of Life's Bond. When another Cleric enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life. And whenever you gain life for the first time, each turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on Cleric's cleric of life spawn so when you put down another cleric when cleric of life spawn is on the battlefield you gain life guess plus one plus one and we have four removal for interaction we have dire tactics exile target creature did i say that right no let's rephrase it again exile target creature if you don't control a human you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Let's say you don't have any creature on the battlefield and you kill a um, a creature that is a 6-6 six, six creature, you lose 6 life. But fortunately, most of our creatures here are humans. Yep, except for Durus and the Broodmoth and Alcid. Well, it's like a slight, uh, a slim chance that you will be losing life with this one and we have two core celebrant i was really i don't know i just want to put this because of the toughness one four it's very hard to kill so whenever core celebrant or another creature enter the the battlefield under control you gain one life of course gain one life 
for the hallowed priest and for the cleric of life's bond that's that's the the synergy of the game right and we have one wall of the sky claves why one i don't know just put it there it's kind of cool your creature gains uh, when it enters the battlefield you can readily attach it to another creature where the creature gets plus two plus two has flying and for a strike if it gets killed you can equip it again but you have to pay really really expensive it's uh two colorless and two white mana we have two call of a death dweller why because you want to bring back your creature you don't want to die you want them to die you don't want them to die easily and just you know they have to serve another purpose in life so you have to call them back so what's called with that dweller well you return up to two target creature cards with total converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield then you put a death touch counter on either of them then put a menace counter on either of them so let's see um let's say speaker of the heavens and uh, lumeric spirant is in the graveyard you cast this one you can bring them back to the battlefield because the the total casting cost is three one from the speaker of the heavens and one from the luminary experiment and you can put a death touch counter on each of them or just that touch uh death touch counter or on one of them and a menace counter on one of them or you can put that touch and menace on just one creature okay and you have veto thorn of the dust rose that's a lot that's a lot to say so it's a vampire cleric still a cleric it's a vampire and it's a cleric so this one is whenever you gain life target opponent loses that much life so when you have a creature like uh, i'll see the blight's bounty attack for one you gain one life and they lose one life uh, that's not all you have to pay for you need to you you pay five and creatures you control gain life link until the end of turn and we have lurus of the dream then you know lurus you know i didn't use this as, as a companion here because we have a lot of big creatures right so during each of your turns you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from the graveyard most of our key cards here are key creatures creature cards creature cards yeah is uh two or less mana except for the core celebrant which is three to cast that's why i only put two of them and we have a special creature here called the luminous brood moth 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 Moth, brood moth. Okay, so it's an insect. Of course, it's a moth. It's flying. It has really cool ability. You know, whenever a creature control without flying dies, does. Yeah, you return it to the battlefield under its owner control, under its owner's control, with a flying counter. So let's say your um, Lumeric aspirant die. You put it back and it gains flying and four lands we have one emiria's call just one maybe useful at uh, the end game we have agadim's uh, awakening just one too uh, could be useful to bring back your creature at the latter part of the game because it's so expensive with three black mana we have one castle arden Vale, again to produce creature only three planes and three swamp four bright climb pathway the dual face land that produces black and white mana we get to choose either one of them scarred barons for uh, producing black and white mana at the same time you gain life but it enters the battlefield tapped and we have two fabled passage why two i don't know just put two there because you want to rotate the the deck and you know trim it down a little so that's it that's a deck but before we dive into the battles to the gameplays uh, don't forget to you know subscribe there you go 
and like or comment down below. So, wish me luck, humans. Let's get it on. Well, we're up against DTSG for our first match. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm digging this. Let's see. Damn, I made a mistake. I should have put it down first before I attack, right? Ah, huh? there it goes. I hate that creature. That creature is gonna mess up all of our plans. Oh, this is new. It's a blue white mill deck. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I was thinking, am I gonna counter it or not? Go ahead. Oh my god, he's gonna cast it. Shatter the sky. Ooh, shatter the sky, huh? Gonna draw. It's gonna draw, man. A ruined crab. Come on. And he draws again. I think it's done. Good game, boys. Good game. It's a pretty weak. Um, I, I don't think. If it was me, I would. Maybe he's experimenting on it. It's a good thing, actually. I think magic players should exercise creating their own deck instead of net decking. Like I always say, it eliminates the purpose of playing magic itself. It's like people would always just want to win and win and just net deck, find deck that wins. I don't know. To each his own.
but for me I like creating my own deck even though it loses most of the times but you know you learn from those mistakes then at the end you create a better deck right next match we're up against Marmoran let's see how wow I just love it when we go first Yeah, boy. Let's. Forest white. Now we don't have any land. Anyway, right, this one. Let's kill that thing. Nope. He doesn't want to be killed. have two freaking mana what could go wrong right two mana two lands what does this do it can't attack oh my god what have you done boy what have you done Come on! Really? I hate this guy, man. This is not cool. Alright. What do we do? We lack lands. This thing sucks. How can we remove this one? I can sacrifice this one.
Oh. Hallelujah. Who should we kill? Um It's getting really, really hard. You see, the thing is, we're, oh my god, another angel. Oh, good lord. That hallowed priest is getting hallowed. Oh, another luminar. Damn, why can't I get a land? Good, really. Good freaking, freaking, long fling. Please give me a freaking land. And he just quit. I don't know why. Ah, ah, okay. That's good. I don't know. Is it, is it a mirror deck or something? Well, anyway. It's been a quick game. With only three lands, okay? I don't know what's wrong with a shuffler. People complain about it, but I don't. Shit happens, you know? When you're in a game. Bad luck, good luck. It's a game. Off to the next match, though. Here we are. Against Alf948. And let's see. Do we have lands? Oh my god, we have like... Okay. Deal with this. We don't have any black mana. Gonna get killed. There you go. Crush it. Oh, good. Hmm. Oh, come on, don't tell me you're gonna kill it. Oh, flash fire. Good job, man.
I got a flying cleric. Unless it dies. Please don't kill my cleric. Please don't kill my cleric. Scavenging ooze. ooze. You can attack, that's okay with me. It's fine. down to 11 so sad Where's my brood mod? I want my brood mod. Oh, he's gonna kill my artifact. Oh, good lord, what happened? Oh, good. Please attack. Wow. Just gonna put down another brush fire elemental. Where are you boys? It's a cool deck actually, it's more of a fun deck actually, it's just testing this deck and all. It's been a good straight wins actually for me. Three games in a row. That's not bad actually. Well, anyway, before we end this session, uh, please don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, and like or dislike and comment. Uh, so I can continue on doing this and I apologize for not posting more videos because I um, I have a lot of things to do uh, uh, I'm gonna put down the link below for my red bubble account I also sell t-shirts design I, I design t-shirts and you can actually see my uh, 
portfolio there and also don't forget to support my wife's youtube channel house of hazelnuts and also on facebook uh she does this really cool food photography and all and match actually it's really cool i can't even do the things what you know that she does with the camera and magic and all and visit my website poeticdustbin.com for more blogs and more of these games and more of my artworks and all uh that's it hope you like the cleric deck and see you on the next upload poetic has been here saying good day to all you humans i'll be back soon rock on